Hey everybody, welcome back. Chad and I are here again. Hi everybody. All right, it's been four weeks since brew day with that uh, NEIPA beer that we made, and four weeks to the day basically. Right. Long wait. Yes. So it's a long wait. So we are excited, um, and we're gonna taste it in just a second here. Uh, well, actually, just a second here. How about we just get get that done first, huh? Might as well. I'm, yeah. I'm dying. Four weeks. It's been a while. All right. We'll be back. Right, gang let's uh give it a little, little tip little taste can't wait can't wait all right oh man it smells like uh well oh, it just smells awesome. tropical fruit smells a little bit of grapefruit a little bit of i don't know mango or or guava i don't, I don't know man but it smells good a little apricot oh it tastes good too it's not as bitter as we uh, really planned. Not at all. Not at all. Four weeks ago, we uh, did a post-boil sampling, and we were kind of commenting on what we thought was a little bit too much bitterness in this. Well, no, <laughs> no bitter. Well, there's bitterness, but it's not standing out. The actual juiciness, the actual flavor, stands out. It's killer. Yeah, it's very clean tasting. Oh man, it's not very bitter. Not very bitter. Could be a little less bitter, maybe, I don't know, I but don't know. It, it, I like it just the way it is. It is an IPA, after all, right? I'm going to get the wrong impression, but it's not really bitter. It's just it's nope. good. It's just good. Juicy, just like we, this, this, what, so we, so success, yeah? Yeah, I would say success. This was definitely a lot better than uh, indications would imply as far as the bitterness go, but this is good. Yeah, yeah, well, all I right. I do get that little grapefruit note, actually, when I drink it. I didn't notice that when I smelled it. it. it my first pour out of this thing when I was doing a sampling yesterday was, um, it was just intense. Uh, this aroma, as I was pouring it, the, just the, just the, uh, sm like the citrusy aroma just went right up my nose as I was pouring that beer, and just now, too, yeah, actually. And, uh, man. Mmm. I think it's got like a little uh, hoppy, yeasty smell to it, but other than that, it's, mm -hmm. man. This is killer. So, so okay, so Chad, it's a success then, right? So I can share the recipe? I think you can share this recipe, All right. unless you wanted to go through a version 2 and 3. <laughs> no, no, I actually didn't, uh, because because I did that brew day video, folks, separately from this video. For one, it was a really, really long video, uh, but two, I don't want to... Put something out there that's going to end up being terrible and then you guys think I suck at making recipes right because if it turns out bad I already shared it I want to wait till I tried it make sure I shared it uh, after that right just that makes sense it makes sense I mean especially for a beer I've never tried before like this so now that I know it's really good if you want a copy of this well let's go over this first right so so the grain bill uh, I'll show it on screen here was uh, 11 pounds of two row malt, one pound of flaked oats, one pound of red wheat malt, and a half pound of rice hulls. That was to keep the wheat from clogging the mash um, manifold, basically. That's why it's in there. It's not for flavor. But it's basically 81% two-row, 7% flaked oats, 7% red wheat malt, and a half pound, of, or, which, of, which is 4% of uh, rice hulls. The... Um, the mash schedule was just 153 degrees Fahrenheit for 60 minutes. Basically what I do for all my mashes, a single infusion mash, it's all I did. And then um, the hops. Now, this is where it gets really interesting, right? A first wort hop addition, half ounce citra, half ounce uh, mosaic uh, uh, hops, right? And then at the very end, we, we did a hop stand, right? So at the flame out, we chilled the beer down to about 185 degrees Fahrenheit, I think it was, yep. right? And then we added our hop stand hops, which was one and a half ounces of citra and one and a half ounces of mosaic. And we let that stand in the hop stand for 15 minutes on a timer. Whoop, something's going on here. Oh, I lost my signal. I'm, I'm cooking ribs, folks, um, upstairs to, to, to eat with this beer here. So apologize for that. And uh, what, else, what else did we do? So the hop stand for 15 minutes, and then we uh, chilled it down and racked it and kegged it, right? Or, put it in the fermenter mm -hmm. right and then uh, for dry hopping now uh, I put I put about one ounce each of citra and one ounce 
of mosaic in, as a dry hop after the seventh day. Now, um, I would have put them in probably a little bit sooner if my fermentation was going faster, but since it was slowing down, uh, it took a bit longer. I was trying to get the hops in on the tail end of the fermentation where there was just a little bit of, of activity in the airlock to purge the oxygen out of the hops and the pellets and to fill up the headspace again. And so in this instance, since it was fermenting slower, it was at seven days. And if I had done it normally, it may have been at, at the five day mark and I just left it alone. I didn't add more hops later on, right? So just those two ounces of hops, one ounce of citra, one ounce of mosaic for those right after the seven day mark. And then the yeast is the one that everyone talks about using with the style, which was that London Ale number three by Y yeast, the 1318 yeast. And so made a yeast starter of that and put it in there. And I was supposed to add some yeast nutrient, which again, I forgot to do, which is why it took three weeks instead of two weeks. And I fermented it here down in my basement and it was in about the mid sixties. Uh, so that uh, was on the lower end of the range, but it was a little bit cool down here. So uh, by about a week and a half mark, when I re realized the, the beer was not fermenting as, as well, I thought it was the temperature. I brought it upstairs by my fireplace and put it down there for the other week and a half. Mm -hmm. And it was about 72 degrees. So uh, it, a little bit of extremes there at first. It was cold and it was later on, which I was reading actually. Uh, some people say to do that for this style, that you want the warmer fermentation temperatures towards the end of the fermentation to bring out some of the estery flavors in the, in the yeast. Uh, I read about that in hindsight, so it was just luck that this happened this way. But well, I, I don't, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I think it does have a, I could taste the yeast if it's, maybe it's just me. Mm. Well, I just kegged it a week ago, and after, and it takes, it takes about a good week and a half for any yeast to start to mm -hmm. settle out. So there's some yeast in suspension probably still, sure, but. Um, but that's how all my beers uh, start off with, with anyway in the keg. Right, 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 right. You know. um, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying it's very good beer. I mean, it's very good. So, so I'm going to share that recipe with you guys. I'm going to put the, um, not only is it already on the, the Grandfather website, the brew.grandfather.com website, it's also on, I will be posting it in this video description as links, as a PDF printout, which will look like this. Right, it will look like this form here. And then I'll actually export that as a beer XML file as well for those who use Beersmith or other tools that read that file format. And for those who use my spreadsheet, I actually adapted uh, that grandfather recipe as best I can to my spreadsheet. Now it's, the numbers are not exactly one for one matching. Uh, part of that was the efficiency issue we talked about last time I so I, I had a reverse engineer or, or kind of work backwards to find a, an equivalent efficiency for my system to give me the numbers of alcohol by volume and everything uh, the specific gravity so on and so forth that are similar so I'll put that link in the video description as well for those who want to use this version but I have not brewed this version so double check the numbers and make sure you they're uh, they're good for your brew system before you brew it I don't take any responsibility for what's on this sheet just what's in the Grandfather, Grandfather website then. because that's what I brew to. Okay, so other than that, um, thanks for watching. I'm glad you tuned in yet again to see the the final con conclusion of this NEIPA yeah. saga, right? Um, I, I, uh, this is the final video, officially the second video, but there's actually a middle video here. If you haven't seen my how to rack from from a carboy video that I just posted a, several days ago. I was using the NEIPA in my carboy as the sample beer in that video. So this is actually technically the third video of this, but really, whatever. Of the, the beer, right. About the beer. So anyway, salute, cheers, prost, skull, all the other greetings and all the different languages. Chad, thanks thanks for coming all the way up here. Thanks for inviting me, and yeah. I couldn't wait after four weeks. And uh, finally got it. It's definitely worth the wait, though. And it, it is. It's, it's really good beer. All right, folks. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe.